Welcome to the Coastal Podcast. We're so glad that you're tuning in. Our hope is that this time will bring some light and encouragement into your world wherever you are. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let's dive in together. Grace and peace. Well, good morning, church. How's everybody feeling today? Man, so good to see you. Yesterday was an amazing day, man. Serve day, went out into the community, just lots of amazing things happening. And the weather was perfect. Hey, we've done this before where the serve day is more like the weather today. And it's just like, hey, it was a great day. Um, already hearing lots of great testimonies of people just being blessed by that. And so, um, man, just, just wonderful. Hey, I want to get right into it this morning. I want to read again the scripture that was just on the screen, but I want to do it again. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. Does that not sound good this morning? Come on. Easy to bear. Come on. Man, uh, it's just such a wonderful, beautiful invitation. Let me give you some context to what Jesus is saying right here. The crowd that Jesus is speaking to is young and old, it's rich and it's poor, it's people from uh, all types of backgrounds and educated and uneducated. But in the mix of this diverse crowd emerges two particular group of people. Uh, group number one, there, there, there's the, the Jewish man, the Jewish woman who has been trying their best to, to fulfill the law. To, to know that God accepts me and, and the way that God accepts me is I, I, I fulfill the law, I do all these things, but they are failing miserably. And they know it and they feel the weight of it. They feel the weight of, uh, of, of, of their sin, of all the things that are going on in their life. And so they feel uh, this in their life. And then the second group of people uh, were people that we would call the Pharisees, the Sadducees, uh, the scribes, the teachers of the law. And these were the ones that would teach these laws of God. On, on, this is how you become right with God. And, and even in the midst of all of their teaching other people how to do it, they themselves would have to know that they too fall short. But after all, they're Pharisees, they're Sadducees. They have to live up to their reputation. And so they have to pretend like they've got it all together. They've got to act like, hey, this yoke isn't that heavy at all. It's just so easy to follow these ways of God. And this is the group that Jesus is saying, all of you come to me. Come to you that are weary from this burden of, of carrying this, uh, this yoke that you is waiting on your shoulders. And, and then this other group who maybe you're just tired of pretending. You're tired of acting like you've got it all together. You're tired of, man, well, you're the teacher and everyone knows, and, and you've been carrying that weight for so long. Come on, give it to me. Has anybody ever had to pretend in their life? What a heavy yoke. What a heavy yoke to try to pretend to be something you're not. To try to pretend to be smarter than you are. Come on. I walk into a room with some guys that know cars, and I try and act like I know what all those V8, V6, 17-cylinder, I don't even pretend anymore. I ain't got time for that. Because y'all going to figure out real quick, I don't know nothing about cars. Trying to pretend is one of the heaviest weights that you could carry. I remember uh, before we started the church, I was a missionary in Indonesia, and we came back and I had this real clear word from God that, hey, I want you to start this church in Brunswick County. And, and, and I remember thinking we had that first Sunday and then people started calling me pastor. And I was like, no, don't call me that. <laughs> and, and then people kept doing it. I'm like, you just call me Lucas. <laughs> like, pretty sure the church is going to fail in like three weeks. Uh, so don't call me Pastor, don't, you know, and I had such a hard time with it. And then what happened is I took this yoke upon myself 
And I thought that I had to be everything that I thought a pastor was. And so I spent a number of years pretending to be a pastor. Pretending, and I, I put this, all this unnecessary weight upon myself of what I, I thought people expected of me, but even more of what I thought I should expect of myself. And let me tell you, it was miserable. Absolutely miserable. Till I got to the point where, you know what, I'm just comfortable being me. I'm, this, is, this is who I am, this is how it is. You can, the same dude, this Sunday mornings right here on the same stage is the same dude you're going to catch on oh, Thursday nights. That's just who I am. And if you see me at Walmart, that's who I am. And, and, and I'm just, this is, this is it. And, and man, that, that weight of having to pretend. But what's interesting, when Jesus gives this, he's saying, listen, all of you, all of you who, who, who are, are, are listening to my words, this invitation is for you. Now, here's the thing. He says that there's this yoke of mine that I want you to carry. Now, when we think about this yoke, a, a lot of us have been taught that, hey, there's this yoke, and it's when you put these oxen together, and they, they get bound together, and then you pull the farming term, and that's exactly how it would be used in that day, too. But it wasn't just a farming term. It was also a religious term. It was a religious term because it meant uh, if you were following a rabbi, a rabbi would be your teacher, and it meant you would take on the yoke of your rabbi. So whatever that rabbi's teaching was, you would follow underneath that rabbi and you would carry his yoke. At the time of Jesus, there was two of the most popular rabbis in first century Jerusalem. You had Halil and Shammai. And these two guys, according to Jewish, Jewish literature, they, got, they were a complete opposite of each other. If Halil said one thing, Shammai said another thing about the scriptures, and they would argue about their interpretation and who was right and who was wrong, and, and, and then they would fight, and then there would be all the people that would follow Halil's yoke and all the people that would follow Shammai's yoke, and, and, and they would kind of play these games in order to turn people against each other, and they would fight about the interpretations. Now, we don't know anything about that here in America. <laughs> we don't know anything about dividing people amongst into two groups that might have two completely different, we don't know anything about that even in the church, come on somebody. Oh, you're part of what denomination? Or you're, oh, you're non-denomination? Oh, you're this denomination? Oh, come on. And so we, and, and at some point, these people fight so much that they forgot a basic understanding. You're on the same team. You're on the same team. But they have this desire just to be right, and so they're fighting amongst themselves. And I carry this yoke, and I carry this yoke. And I love what Paul says in the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 2, verse 20. It's going to be on the screen. Galatians 2, 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In other words, I don't identify with any of these other things. I am not who I once was. I now identify with Jesus. I am a man of the kingdom of God. You want to know what side I'm on? I'm on Jesus' side. You want to know, y'all want to break up and you want to fight about things? I am about the kingdom of God. Paul has died. He said, I've been crucified. None of that doesn't even matter anymore. I want to be a person of the kingdom. I bear the yoke of Jesus. And so when Jesus gives this invitation, it's to everyone, this invitation of this brand new yoke. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you're talking to a group of people that are being crushed under the weight of these yokes uh, on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, you would think Jesus would come and be like, hey, I'm doing away with that. There's no yoke at all. But that's not what Jesus says. There is a yoke. I have something for you. And yet you got to carry it along with me. Now this, for us, man, I mean, this is great news. The, the yoke of Christ, until we start to actually look at the teachings of Jesus. And then we look at the book of Matthew, chapter five and six and seven, this famous Sermon on the Mountain, where Jesus begins to teach his followers about what it is to carry his yoke. And his yoke says something like this, you've heard it said by those of old, but I say to you. And then Jesus does something that no other rabbi has ever done in history. He begins to say things like, listen, you say it's enough not just to kill anybody. I say don't even do it in your heart. If you do it in your heart, you're guilty. 
Uh, I don't, 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 don't cheat on your spouse. Don't steal. Don't, don't even think about it. If you think about it, you're guilty. Now, if you're listening to this, you're like, whoa, this yoke, I can't even, I can't even barely get this together. There's no way. If you knew what was going on in my heart, Jesus, to which he's like, I do. I know exactly what's going on. And if you do, and, and you're just, you're being, wow, this yoke, there's no way I can do it. And there's this invitation, and it sounds crushing. It sounds, there's no possible way until you hear the rest of the story. And the rest of the story is simple it's my yoke. I make a way for you to enter in. I will fulfill the law. I myself will be the sacrifice. I will show you how to love your enemies. I will fulfill everything that you can't do on your own. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He made a way. It is his good works, not mine. In other words, the righteousness and the yoke that we carry is the fulfillment of what Christ did on the cross. It's Jesus' good works, and there's nothing I can do to earn my salvation. So this yoke that I carry is simply coming underneath Jesus and saying, God, you've done it. The only way I could be righteous is because of your righteousness. This is the yoke that Jesus says, come and carry. And this is the secret to the light yoke. It's your good works not mine. To put it another, another way, we could only love because he first loved us. And it would be a huge mistake to think that we could do it without him. It would be a huge mistake to think, well, well I, I got all this covered. God, just give me the list. Give me the rules and regulations. I'll attend church every Sunday. It'll be all good. Good luck with that. I mean, we read things like the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. We read it at weddings. Look at what it says beginning in verse 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning with verse 4. Love is patient and kind because we've nailed that one. <laughs> love is not jealous or boastful, easy, proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. I demand my own way all the time, all the time. It is not irritable. Come on, somebody. Come on. It keeps no record of being wrong. I've got a long list. I know all the way, all the things, all the mistake is to think that, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, we've got this. We could only love because he first loved us. It's only possible because this is the yoke that we, un we walk underneath that. Jesus, you have done it to accept this invitation to, to follow you. I have never saved anybody. You have never saved anybody. You can't save yourself. I can't save myself. I know you think you have a plan on how you're going to fix the country. It ain't going to work. I've got my plan. You've got your plan. Your kids got their plan. The dude down the street got the plan. There's only one plan. And there's only one answer, and that's Jesus Christ. But sometimes we're like, come on, we're going to change the world. Y'all, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out how to change the toilet paper holder the other day. I'm like, change the world. We need some Jesus. Amen. See, this is good news, but it's not good news for the Pharisee. Because the Pharisee only sees this as threatening his way of life. The, threat, the Pharisee is invited into this invitation, but for him, he's like, no, 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 this, this, this changes everything, and it changes how, how we do things and how we teach, and, and, and it threatens their pretending. People will see me for who I really am. It's the recognition of their absolute depravity and his absolute sovereignty. And this is the call. And the context is a crowd that's in need. Right before this, about a chapter and a half earlier, Jesus is teaching, again, there, there's a crowd of people. He looks out and he sees the need of humanity. 
And he says this, he says, listen, these people are like a sheep without a shepherd. There is a great harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And then a little while later, there's this um, invitation to come, to come into this kingdom life, to this easy yoke. Listen to what it says in the book of Matthew, chapter 20. As we explore just a few more of the secrets of the kingdom. Hmm. That scared me. Whew. Shoo. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. I almost spit my water all over. <laughs> For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal day's wage and send them out to work. At 9 o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them too. And he told them, listen, I'll pay you whatever is right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard at noon. And again at 3 o'clock, he did the exact same thing. At 5 o'clock that afternoon... He was in town again, and he saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join others in my vineyard. That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and to pay them, beginning with the last worker first. Then those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed this. They assumed that they would receive even more, because they, but they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested. They complained to the owner. Those people, those people worked only one hour and yet you've paid them just as much as you have paid us who have worked here all day in the scorching heat. To which he answers, friend, I haven't been unjust. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I wanted with my money. Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? Uh, should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So, there, so those who were last will now be first, and those who first were first will be last. So here's the story. The kingdom of, of God is like this. And there was this uh, vineyard owner. He goes out, and, and, and he goes out. It doesn't tell us exactly what time he started in the morning, but we see this pattern of 9 o'clock, noon, 3 o'clock. There's kind of three-hour segments. And so there's a good chance that he started his day at 6 a.m., and the sun is just coming up, and he's making his place to the marketplace to hire workers for his vineyard. Now the day goes on, and he continues to make trip after trip after trip. And this is what it's like to be in the construction business. You go to Lowe's again and again and again, over and over. Why? Because there's a job to do and he needs more workers. So he goes at 9 and he goes at noon and he goes at 3 and he goes at 5. And he keeps going back over and over again. And we get to the end of, day, of the day. He begins to hand out the day's check. And there's an assumption that's made because the guys that were hired and only worked for an hour get a full day's check. So this guy's like, oh, I'm about to get paid. I've been here all day long. I put in 12 hours. He put in one hour. I am about to make bank. To which he goes to get his check, and he gets the same amount as the other guy. And he is complaining. I, I, I can't believe you're doing this. Listen, blood, sweat, and tears. I've been in this scorching sun all day long for you. Do you know how hard I've worked? I've been working out here all day. I, I, I took a, a short lunch. I did all of these things for you. Do you know how hard it was? Come on, some of us. We ever get in that complaining mode? 
Come on, Jesus. But, but I planted a church. Come on, Jesus. But I taught Sunday school for the last 15 years. But come on, Jesus, I've got a perfect Sunday attendance. I, I've, been, I've been helping my neighbor as long as they've been my neighbor, and I can't even stand that dude. Come on, you know how many yards I've been mowing for free, how many widows I've been helping, you know, all these things I've been doing for you, Jesus. All of this is under complaining. There's something that you owe me that is more than what you owe this other guy. He's only been here for an hour. And there's a reminder that the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God lets people in at the 11th hour. The kingdom of God lets people in at the 11th hour because there is a recognition that there is still work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so we need more people to harvest this crop. And so I don't care if it's 6 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock at night, you are welcome into this kingdom. But I've been out here for 12 hours. And all of a sudden, all we can see is our paycheck. There's what to do me. He'll reward me more than this other guy. Do you know what type of life they've lived? They've been standing in the marketplace. They haven't done anything all day. I've been working so hard. I've been working this field. And one thing's for sure, they haven't done the work that I have. I'm worthy, they're not. I remember this one time, I came home from work, it was one of those days, and guys, have you ever had one of those days where you go home and you see your woman and you just know that she's had a day? And you're like, I'm going to be very, very careful <laughs> with what I say and what I do tonight, because she's about to snap. And I don't think I've done anything yet, but there's a good chance I might. So I came home, and there's, a, there, there's all these dishes, and, and there's a pile over to the left side that's the clean pile, because you could tell she's just been there for a long time. She's been washing all these dishes. And then there's just a few dishes left, so I'm like, hey, maybe get over here. And I start helping him do dishes, and she looks at me, and she's like, what are you doing? She's like, there's only a few dishes left. I got this. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just trying to help you, girl. I, I know I came in at the 11th hour, but, but let, me, let me tell you about my day. Let me tell you what your kids did. <laughs> Every time my kids are crazy, they're my kids, right? When the kids are really good, they're her kids. When they, when they do something awesome, they're hers. I mean, I don't, let me tell you, and I'm just like, oh, okay, all right, all right. She's like, no, no, I'm going to finish these dishes because I've been doing this this whole time. I'm like, okay. I remember this other time, uh, my neighbor was, had, a, had a yard to mow, was struggling. I was like, man, I'm going to jump out there. I'm going to help him mow. And I get out there, and I'm, I'm kind of helping him mow. And, and some other neighbors come like, man, you're doing such a good thing. You're helping your neighbor out. And they stopped, and we're talking. And, and the other neighbor's, like, still mowing. And I'm like, I ain't helping no more because you're talking to me. I'm like, this dude's been out here for, like, three hours trying to mow their grass. I just started, and then, like, it was, like, a stolen valor. You know, like, I haven't done anything Right, and I'm just there, and they're like, oh, you're such a, like, uh -huh. Sometimes we have a hard time letting people help us when we've been doing something for a long time. Sometimes we have a hard time letting people come in at the 11th hour, but they're a tax collector. Do you know what they did? But they're a prostitute. Do you know what they did? They've been, they've been in this marketplace all day. They've just been chilling all day. Uh, I, I've been at this, I've been a disciple all day working in this sun. Do, do you, you know that God healed them? God healed that person? They smoked two packs of cigarettes a day for 20 years. I've never touched it and now I'm the one with lung cancer. They deserve it. I don't. Am I hitting close to home for anybody? Like, I know you don't say it out loud. But come on, have we ever, ever had that moment? I've been working this job for 10 years, and, and they just hired Jeff, and he's making just as much money as I am. Did you not agree to the pay? Come on, somebody. 
And the kingdom of God is like this. And the kingdom of God lets people in at the end. It is a heavy yoke to become judge and jury. It is a heavy yoke to say who's worthy and who's not. It's a heavy yoke to carry this, and this is not the yoke of Christ. Is it not against the law? Is it that I could do what I want with my money? Why should you be jealous? See, because the owner of the vineyard knows something. Listen, there's a job to get done, and we need more people to get it done. See, there's a shift that changes. The shift changes where the workers are now only thinking about their pay and what's due them. If, if they were to stop for a minute and realize, listen, we don't have enough guys here to get the job done. We need some more help. You need some help with those dishes. You need some help in that lawn. You need some, there's some people right now sitting underneath a bridge somewhere that need Jesus. We need some more churches. We need some more pastors. We need some more evangelists. We need some more of you and me to go out and share the gospel. Oh, no, we've got enough churches in Brunswick County. No, we don't. These people need it. Who are we to say? Because this invitation is open to all. You want to know a secret to the easy yoke? It's, it's, it's really deep thought, y'all, <laughs> really deep. Secret to the easy yoke. Let the king be the king. Let Jesus be Jesus. Let him invite in whoever he wants to invite in. Let him throw the party however he wants to throw the party. Let him hire people at 6 a.m. Let him hire people at noon. Let him hire people at 3 o'clock. Let him hire people at 5 o'clock in the afternoon where there's only one hour left. Let those people come in. Let the king be the king of your life and you stop judging his kingdom on what you think is acceptable. I don't care who you are. If the king says, come on, go to work. This is the secret to the easy yoke. And I don't care if you've been saved for 40 years or four minutes. I don't care if you've been teaching Sunday school all of your life or if you were smoking crack last week. Amen. The king is saying, come on, yeah. my son, my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I want you. I want you. See, the kingdom of God is like this. God, do whatever you want. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. I know I've been working in this field for 12 hours. I know I've gone through some terrible stuff. I know it's been hard, but I'm just happy that you called me. I'm just happy to be a part of your kingdom. But the temptation is to start complaining. The temptation is to, to look at the works we've done and think that our works earn us a certain spot. And we do this because we have a tendency only to see things from our own perspective. What if? For a moment, these workers put themselves in the other guy's shoes. So here are some things that you need to know about the marketplace. The marketplace in those times is where you went to get hired. This is, where, this is where men would go out and they would gather in these certain places and owners of different places would come on and, and it would be like day laborers. Hey, I've got some work and I'm hiring certain people. So imagine you're there. And I got some working at 6 a.m. in the morning, and I say, I want you, and I want you, and I want you, I want her, and I want him. Come on. And you don't get picked. And he comes again at 9 o'clock. Give me this one, and that one, and this one, and again, you don't get picked. Come on, remember when you were a kid, and they were picking teams, basketball? And you know you can't shoot no layup. And they're there, and they're, and they're waiting in this marketplace all day long. Here's the thing. The guy that got hired at 6 a.m., he knows he's got a check coming. I know I'm going to work this day, and I'm going to get paid. The other guy's still waiting. The other guy, does anybody want me? Does anybody want me? I didn't get picked again. I didn't get picked at six. I didn't get picked at nine. I didn't get picked at noon. Here's the thing. If you didn't get picked by lunchtime, there's more than a good chance that you weren't gonna get picked that day. And, and, and you knew that, like, I don't, I don't know what to do because everybody else, and, and if you're still there at three o'clock in the afternoon, there's like a 90% chance that you're not getting picked. 
No, nobody wants me, but you're still there. Nobody wants me. And we have this group of guys that are complaining because they came in at the last hour. Which one's harder? The guy that got picked at 6 a.m. or the guy that got picked at 5 p.m.? I know for some of us, you got saved when you were five years old. And you've known the joy of knowing Jesus your entire life. And you've served him for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years faithfully. And you know what it is. And you've put in the time. You know what it is to be assured of your salvation. But just maybe for some of us, we forgot what a blessing it was to be called out. We forgot what it was that he called us. And he saved us. And he did the work. Because church, this is a warning. Don't get caught up with what you think is due you. Don't get so caught up with what you think is due you that you no longer let in the 11th hour worker. Don't be mad at God because he did. It's a warning. Waiting in that marketplace. Complaining because the master's done something that you didn't like. Which one's harder? I don't know. That's not the point. That's actually the wrong question because both carry a yoke that's impossible to, to bear. Both carry this impossible yoke. And the kingdom of God is like this. It's not about your works that justify you. It lets the king be king and it doesn't matter if you were picked in the first round draft pick or in the sixth round draft pick. Let the king be the king. And for some of us, it's this call to return to the joy of our salvation. Amen. Let me give you a few things for some of us that might be struggling with this concept. Number one, the marketplace. We have to position ourselves in a place where we can be hired. See, the marketplace is, a people, uh, is, is there for people that are longing for work, longing for, for, for souls, long, souls longing for change, longing for freedom in Christ, longing for the easy yoke, longing for the light burning that will wait on the Lord. See, they're in a place where, where they know that getting hired is possible. So he, he returns at 9 o'clock and, and 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. I don't know about you, but I want to position myself in a place where I know God is present. I want to position myself in a place where I know God has passed before their time and time again. Listen, listen, y'all. I'm the pastor of this church. There's times where I do not want to come to church on Sundays. There are days where I'm like, I would just love to sleep in. I would just love to not think about any of this stuff. But you know what keeps me coming? I know that this is a place where his presence shows up. And Jesus... There's something that happens in your presence. You call me out in such a way I worship together in the presence of my other brothers and sisters that I can't get on my own. And your presence fills the place. So I just want to be where you are because I show up because I want to bless your name and I want to see your face and I want to touch the hem of your garment once again. <laughs> to position ourselves in that place. Where are you moving, God? And I just want to be there. Number two, you've got to not go home. You've got to be there at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 3. See, th these guys know that, listen, I can't go home. If I go home, my kids don't eat. If I go home, I've got nothing. If Jesus, if you don't show up, I've got nothing else. There's no other turn, no other way. I've got to be with you, Jesus. We have got to be a people who stop throwing in the towel the second things get tough. We have got to be a people that it doesn't matter how hot the noonday sun is, I will not go home. Jesus, I will wait on your presence. I will wait for you to do something. I will not go back and just lay on the couch. I need you more than anything else. And having done all that you can do to stand, keep on standing. I'm just going to stand on the Word of God. I'm just going to believe the Word of God. I don't care how crazy my kids are. I'm going to believe for their salvation. 
I don't care how far off these people are. I'm going to believe that he who began a good work will see it through to the day of Christ Jesus. I am not giving up because situations look dire. I'm not giving up because the doctor's report isn't what I want it to say. I'm going to stand and having done all I could do, I don't care if it's 5 o'clock at night and there's a 99% chance that nobody wants to hire me. I got nowhere else to go. Jesus, you are the way. You are the truth and you are the life. And everything else does not satisfy. To stand, to not go home. And lastly, we've got to be a people that seek first the kingdom of God. For some of us, yeah, it may be a long day. It might be blood, sweat, and tears. But the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. And he's making his rounds. And guys, we talk about it being the last days. He's still making the rounds. I still need more people. I still need more people for my kingdom. I still need you. There's still a call of God on your life. I, I, I know you may feel like, man, uh, I'm 70, I'm 80 or whatever. I bet you don't know what I've done. He's still calling you. Come home, my son. Come home, my daughter. To be a people that I'm not even, I'm not even worried about my paycheck at the end of the day. I don't care if I work one hour or 12. I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be at the party. Stand with me to your feet, please. Jesus looks over the crowd and he sees the way to the people. He sees people like sheep without a shepherd. And you know what he does? He prays. He prays. And then after he prays, he takes his 12 disciples. He takes the 12 that had been given to him and he sent them out. He took what was in his hands and he changed the world. I'm telling you, God's already giving you what you need right now. It may not look like enough, I guarantee you it is. It changed the world with 12. Guys, we've got hundreds of people. I, th I think we could change Brunswick County. I think Brunswick County has a chance. I think our other churches have a chance. I think we have a chance. I think God could do something miraculous with men and women who let the king be the king. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, for some of us, God, we, we've given in to bitterness and complaining. We've looked at other men and women and said they're not worthy. And we're just worried about what's due us, God. We repent. We repent of our sin. Soften our hearts. Help us not to carry that yoke of that Pharisee. Help us not to carry that yoke of thinking that we could do it in our own strength. Help us not to carry that yoke that says, but because we've done this, now we're worthy. No, Jesus, you are the way. It's your sacrifice. We repent. And maybe there's someone else in the room today that you've been waiting a long time for this moment. You've been waiting for Jesus. You know what it's like to feel not wanted, to not be picked time and time again. And he's saying, come home, my son. Come home, my daughter. I know you think it looks hopeless. I know it's 5 o'clock. Come home. I want you. There's still work for you to do. If that's you and you're in the room and you know you just need to surrender your life to Jesus, I'm asking for you to lift your hand real high in the air where I can see it. I just want to pray a simple prayer of salvation. Keep it up for me real quick so I can see it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hands all over the room. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking everyone to repeat after me. Lord Jesus. God, I surrender. My life is yours. I am yours. You are mine. Jesus, change my heart. Fill my life. I need you. 
I believe. Help my unbelief. Amen, amen. Guys, get up. We had seven people in the room. Come on. Come on. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We hope that this message has encouraged you. To stay connected with all that God is doing here at Coastal, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you'd like to support the ministry, you can give at mycoastalchurch.com forward slash give. Your generosity truly helps us bring hope and light to our community. We hope that you have an incredible week, grace, and peace.